Hey, Enix Sears here, and in today's video, you'll discover how to compete with the large architecture firms. So last week, I was on the phone with an architect that has been losing projects for three reasons. The first reason is clients have been putting things on hold. Now, this is completely without, you know, out of his control. He has no control over this whatsoever. The second reason that he's been losing projects is because his fees have been higher than the other firms. So clients have come back and they've said, sorry, look, we like you, but your fee was considerably higher than the other firms we were looking at. And number three, he's lost to larger firms because the client said, well, you know, this firm was able to put 30 people on the proposal. You're a, you're a 10 person firm. And so we went with them. So what we're going to address in today's video is the third case where you're going against a larger firm and you're losing against these larger firms. So, hey, Enix Sears here, founder of the Architect Business Institute. And yesterday, we talked about this concept of Jeff, Jeff Bezos. And we talked about Jeff Bezos' what he can teach architecture firms about innovation. Because here's the key, if you're not innovating, you're dying. So, what we see in the business world is similar to what we see in the natural world with this idea of natural selection. That over time, you'll see the survival of the fittest. And so that's what we see now. We see, we see that firms like Gensler, firms like HOK are putting pressure on the small and medium sized firms because HOK, Gensler, these larger firms, they have refined their business development processes. They have refined their business. They have innovated and they're on the cutting edge, sort of like Amazon is innovating in the retail space. So what's a small firm to do? How can you compete against a firm that has a 30 person marketing team? How can you compete against a firm that has specialized people who are professionals specifically at developing new business? Well, if you want to survive and thrive over the next 10 years, not, not, just, not just barely survive, but actually thrive and dominate, we can look at other industries and see how companies have been able to thrive and survive. And we can apply this to your firm and how you can also have the success that you need to be able to survive and to be able to get the kind of products you want Work, on, work with the kind of clients you wanna work with, okay? So let's have a look at, at Amazon. So Amazon has grown back in the late 1990s. Jeff Bezos had this great idea, hey, I'm gonna start this book company. And then from books, he went to online retail, and then from online retail, now they're actually buying up distribution networks in terms of buying trucks and, and uh, delivery vehicles and, and entire infrastructures to be able to deliver their retail products. And you'd think that Typical retailers wouldn't stand a chance because Amazon is so efficient. They can literally deliver a product in the very same day from when you order it, right? So here's the, here's the first key that Jeff Bezos and Amazon can teach us about innovating and about surviving and thriving in a highly competitive market of architecture. Number one, your, your focus on your client has to be supreme. The focus on the client has to be supreme. Now, I talk with architects all the time, and a lot of times architects, they're in architecture for themselves. They're in architecture because they're passionate about architecture. They're passionate about design. And that's great. You have to be passionate about what you do to be able to have the drive and the fire to get up every day and absolutely crush it. But it's not enough if you're not making your client your number one priority. And part of that is understanding what are your client's needs? What do they need? What is their business case or their business reason for doing the project that you want to do, right? So in the same way that Jeff Bezos has a laser-like focus on providing an exceptional experience for people to purchase items online, in the same way, you need to have that laser-like focus if you want to be able to survive the culling of the herd that's happening right now in the field of architecture, okay? The second thing we're going to talk about is differentiation. Right? Even though Amazon has been putting brick and mortar businesses out of business left and right, there are some businesses that have thrived and they will continue to thrive. And I'm gonna list two examples. First one, Lululemon. So they're a specialized maker. They started making women's clothing. They've taken off. They have some brick and mortar locations and they also sell online, right? The second one is Patagonia. So Patagonia, of course, if you don't know, they're an outdoor active sportswear brand, specifically for like mountain climbing, for kind of uh, hiking, you know, those kind of outdoor activities. And through their branding, through their messaging, through their advertising, they've been able to build up a cult following. So people know that Patagonia makes quality products. People know that Lululemon makes things that they can't get elsewhere. And so here's the key. You may not have a 30 person marketing team. You may not be able to compete with the efficiency of a firm like Gensler or have the portfolio of a firm like HOK. But this is where differentiation and specifically specialization comes into it, 
right? So when we look at these companies like Patagonia, like Lululemon, they've honed in on a specific niche in the market. In the case of Patagonia, people who are outdoor enthusiasts who like these outdoor sports like climbing, hiking, spending time outdoors, sailing. With Lululemon, it'd be people who are, you know, generally women, although now they're branched out into men's clothing as well, who appreciate clothes that are comfortable, that are active sportswear, and that are stylish. Okay? So let's have a look, have a think about your architecture firm. Have a think about how differentiated are you? How closely have you drill down on a specific specialization and a specific niche because the days of being everything to everyone passed us by about 10 years ago. So if you're still playing that game of we do every single project and we're just like every other firm, you're going to find it very difficult to survive over the next 10 years. So the question that I would have you consider today is you may not be able to compete with, with uh, some of these larger firms in terms of the infrastructure, the manpower, the portfolio. And a lot of times firms say, well, you know, the, what makes us better is that we're more hands-on. You know, you're going to get direct access to the principal. Well, these kind of thoughts and these kind of sales pitches, they only go so far, right? Because a lot of times the selection committee or the people who are hiring the, the architect, you know, they, they might care more about the safety and security of their project as a, a, of their job as opposed to the fact that they're going to work directly with the principal, right? So they, they believe in these larger firms. So one of the ways that you can combat this is to make sure that you're very focused on who you serve, how you help them, and you can communicate that clearly. I hear the long guys are starting next door, so I think I'm gonna cut this short. Thanks everybody for being here. As always, carpe diem, save today, and if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below. Bye for now.